Hello, and welcome to the lecture on fencing. For this short lecture, we're going to have learning objectives of first, understanding the process for checking fencing details. Second, being able to apply this process to checking our current standard details. And third, evaluating how and when to use fencing details to begin with. So first I'd like to ask, when do you think we'd even use fencing, the fencing detail option? Right. We're gonna to wanna to use the fencing detail option, option similar to you know, during the construction and safety process where we need scaffolding or benching when there is greater than a six foot or 1.8 meter fall risk. Now, we have two fencing details in the fencing detail standard folder. Note that these can be modified and changed if you'd like to redesign uh, your own fencing detail if uh, this is part of, your, part of your scope. However, the steel or F2 fencing detail is the one that is most commonly used. Now, one quick comment on a fence versus a guardrail. The fencing detail itself we're talking about is not the fence along the bridge along the span of the bridge rather, but this is for when the abutment is high, high enough that there is a fall risk for people walking. Now a fence is meant to keep out wind and keep out people, and a guardrail is meant to provide safety for falls. And in this case, a guardrail is what we really mean when we're discussing the fencing details, because we want to keep people safe above that six foot or 1.8 meter distance. So that is the introduction. And now we're gonna go into the F2 standard check itself. And in this lecture, I'll just introduce the loads and we'll talk about the actual analysis in the following units. So to define our dead load, we can take a look at this annotated version of the uh, detail drawing I have here. Our tributary width uh, that the posts are going to find um, you know, pick up the load from is going to be at maximum 200 centimeters, as you can see here. Posts equally spaced 200 centimeters max, so our tributary width is halfway um, from one post to the other, plus halfway on the other direction. And our actual height of the post is going to be 110 centimeters, or unsupported height. Um, so we get 110 centimeters above that. Uh, uh, concrete topping slab. And you can also note that there is a 40 centimeter embedment with into a 15 centimeter diameter block out. And we're gonna, going to treat this post as a cantilever beam when we do its analysis. Now in green here, I have some of the um, lookup dimensions we have. So first you can see the HSS um, 2.5 by 0 0.125. That is just a um, steel shape for a uh, two and a half inch diameter pipe with in here it says three millimeter or 0 0.125 centimeter, uh, sorry, inch thickness. Uh, and we can look that up in the AISC shapes database that I've referred to uh, elsewhere in this course and have attached below. And that is uh, 3.17 pounds per linear foot. Now for our fencing weight, we can use the construction manual, the construction manual, not the design manual, page 107 um, for 11 gauge and two inch or five centimeter uh, spacing mesh fence to get a load of 0 0.48 PSF. And I've also attached that, um, that technical spec below. And finally, uh, our hand cable, we'll ignore the, the weight of the small tie wires, but our hand cable, is a 5 16 diameter cable that we can use the website I've attached below to find an approximate load of 0 0.18 pounds per linear foot. Together, we can add that up to get our pounds per linear foot of dead load or 24, around 24 pounds for a full dead load. And this is per a tributary width, so 24 pounds per post. 
Now we can refer to ASHTO or ASCE for our live loading. And both of these um, governing bodies give a um, distributed and a point load. And these are the same. And in ASHTO, you can find it in section 13.8.2-1. And we have a 50 pounds per linear foot distributed load and a 200 pound point load. These are requested to be acting simultaneously. Now we're going to dig into this assumption because the recent International Building Code in section 4.5 now says you can take the maximum of either. Although ASHTO has not adopted this yet, we're going to use our engineering judgment here. And these guardrails are not as heavily used as some of the guardrails that you can imagine are, are designed for high traffic areas in places that the ASHTO code body governs. So because of that, we're going to make the assumption with our engineering judgment that these guardrails are not heavily used. We're actually going to take the maximum of either of these loads, <clears throat> which in our case for this detail is going to be that 50 pounds per linear foot um, distributed load. It's also worth noting, if you check out these sections of the IBC, you see IBC 4.5.1.2 has an infill load of 50 pounds on any um, you know, square foot part of the entire structure, or infill structure, so that's our wire mesh in this case. In ASHTO section 13.2 specifies an infill area load of 15 pounds per square foot. And we're gonna take that 15 pounds per square foot because that is going to be far and away our maximum load we see in the infill area. Now, our live load with that 50 PLF over our um, tributary width and height is gonna be approximately 328 pounds. And finally, our wind load, we're gonna assume to be negligible in this case. If you do the math using the wind load um, analysis from, our, uh, from the beginning of this course, you find that we see approximately one pound per post. Um, and if we assume the entire area was solid, we'd still only see approximately 10 pounds uh, picked up by each post. So we're gonna assume uh, for the sake of not having to do multiple load combinations and simplicity that the wind load is negligible in this case. And that concludes the, the section on um, the introduction to the fencing and the fencing loads, and we'll go more into the specific checks we want to perform um, that we've chosen to perform in the following lectures.